Hi, I'm Kathy Carroll. So today I was walking past the sample and I have had the opportunity in the last week to work with two of our artisans who did big projects you, um, from this, were inspired on their projects, I should say, um, from this particular sample and it's called Three Sisters. Now how Three Sisters came into play to start with is a long story goes back to 2008 when I went to the south of France with Melanie Royals and on our very last day that we were there we all went to uh, this the cathedral square and we're looking around at everything and I find this postcard okay and this postcard has these three women sitting in front of it and it has this old broken down wall behind them and I called it three sisters well I came home and immediately had to start to replicate the back wall because I thought it was so pretty so so if you understand what I just said or catch what I just said is better thing that's 10 years ago okay so 10 years ago I came up with the way to make that broken crumbly wall which I thought was a great way to do and then people have improved upon it since so I'm going to use my favorite tool for this particular application, which is a Japan scraper. The product that I'm going to use to make this fabulous sample is called Grossiza, G-R-O-S-S-E-Z-Z-A-X-T, made by Profetto. And then I'm going to use a combination of colors. I have uh, the slow drying of acrylic from golden titanium white. I have uh, the color umber from Profetto, and then I also have the color uh, earth brown from Profetto. Now, the earth brown is the same, no, excuse me, this is called terra brown. Some people out in the marketplace know it as earth brown from Faux Effects. It's the same color, earth brown, terra brown, same color. This uh, umber is more of a chocolate instead of a uh, gray, and then of course the white. So I used the Japan scraper. We're gonna go to the sample now, and I'm gonna show you how easy this is to do and how you can stop at any point in time that you want to. All I've done here is I've just primed the surface. And um, because I'm keeping this sample light in color, the white background works perfect for me. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the Grossiza, and I'm gonna tap it and a little bit of the Terra Brown. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to start to place it and smudge it, smush it, however you would like to refer to that, and start to lay this out. Now what's so cool about the Grossiza? It cracks without size. <laughs> so that eliminates one whole step that we have to do. The only thing you have to be careful about with the Grossiza that you're not putting any size down. You could put size down if you wanted to, but then the cracks are going to be bigger and of course they will be secure to the surface. With the Grossiza, if you decide not to use the crackling size, which is what I prefer not to do on this particular application, you're going to get cracks like this where you can see they're little small cracks. Some of them will be bigger if you apply it thicker. Now, the problem of it is, is if you apply it really thick, they'll crack and they'll do what is called a cup, and then you'll be able to just knock it off, which adds to the overall effect. So in my opinion, what you want to do also for your cost, because you don't want to spend too much money on product, is you want to keep this relatively thin and just do your work as you're coming down the wall. So now I'm going to take a little bit more of the Grossiza, and just so that you can see this, I'm going to tap it into uh, the Van Dyke Brown, and I'm going to set a little bit here, and I'm just going to come over here and start a little bit more. And you can see the reason why I like to use the Japan scraper is because it, it allows me just to place little bits here and little bits there. Now I have had people who have done large applications um, with this and of course they use rollers and bigger trowels and things like that. So you can take it to however you want to go. Now what I just did is I added some white to the Grossiza just to add a little white in there. And now I'm just going to get crazy because I'm going slow to show you how to place it, but you don't have to be so quite precise. It's a wonderful finish that actually allows me to do something creative with a particular sample that has been proven to work over and over and over again, but it allows me to change it, to change the colors, to change the look. So, 
Okay. I'd like to add the white in places where I get a little too dark, just to add some depth. So we're gonna put this down, cover our surface, and then we're gonna allow it to dry, and we're gonna come back and do a color wash over the top of it. Or place some more plaster if we find an area that we want to be a little different. You can place some more plaster. But I'm just about ready to put the little final touches on this. I leave some of the background showing. The primer that I have on the surface has some grit to it so that it catches um, the plaster. Now if you overwork this, you'll turn your colors to mud, so you want to be very careful. Make sure you keep your colors the way you want them to be. And then a little trick that sometimes I can do, which I really like, let's say somebody wanted to set in a little blue or a little red or just something a little different, just as an accent color, or even for your canvas work, if you wanted to do something like this, I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna set in a little bit of color with a chip brush. Okay, so what I wanna do is just set in a little bit more color. I'm gonna step back and look at this and see what possibly I could do to it to make it even better. I'm gonna take a little bit of the white with a little bit of the umber colorant and kind of just load my chip brush and maybe just put in a little color here and there. And then I'm gonna come back across it and kind of lay everything down flat with my Japan scraper, leave a few lines in it, a few edges, whatever in it. I'm gonna tap this out a little bit, okay. Now I'm just going to come. So what you can see that I just did there, I added that extra texture below it without having, I've added that extra texture below here without having to add another layer of plaster. I call this sometimes, how I refer to this, is one and a half coats. Because I'm just setting in where I want it to set in. Okay, so I believe, yes, that is exactly what I would like for it to be. So we're going to put it in the dry box now, allow it to dry, and then I'm going to color wash it for you. So by magic of film, we now have a dry sample. See, it's dry. But look at this. Look at the detail that we have gotten here by using this Grossiza XT and just placing it down with the Japan scraper. You can see we've got this wonderful industrial type of look that we've got going here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color wash it. You don't have to. I think it's pretty as it is, but if you wanted to add another step, which a lot of us don't, but we might want to, you want to add another step, we are going to color wash it. So what I'm going to use for the color washing is going to be the golden uh, glazing gel, and I'm going to use the color umber by Perfetto. So what I'm going to do in the color wash of the Three Sisters is I'm going to use a little bit of Perfetto uh, Full Colorant Umber and I'm going to use uh, Golden Paintworks Company's Glazing Medium. A lot of you know this is Full Body Glaze. They changed the name, they've changed the branding. It's gone from Proceed to Golden Paintworks, but it's the same glaze and it's a wonderful glaze. Now what you have to take into consideration when you're getting ready to glaze the Three Sisters is um, because we're using a medium that cracked for us, it will be a little porous um, and might actually try to grab your glaze more so than you would like for it to. 
So lots of times what I will suggest and recommend that customers do is that they butter the surface first. And you can either butter the surface with glaze and then work your glaze mixture into it, or you can um, butter the surface with glaze and water, a mixture of two, put it into a spray bottle and mist your surface ahead of time if that's what you would like to do. But because the sample is so small, we're just gonna go ahead and just directly apply this to it and we're gonna work it with a sponge as far as taking it back off. And we're gonna work with the belly of the sponge. So here's the sponges that we sell here at the Chicago Institute or faux by Kathy. They're, they come to you like this and then you get them damp, you turn them over to their flat spot and then you open them up. And when you open them up, you've got, you're exposing what I term as the belly of the sponge and then you have the face of the sponge. So I use the face of the sponge to clean up and I use the belly of the sponge to apply. So now I'm just going to take the belly of my sponge and I'm going to put it into my glazed mixture. And because it's the first load, needless to say, it loads up a whole bunch. And then I like to take it and smush it together and then open it up and it's been evenly distributed. And now I'm going to take it to my surface and I'm just going to do a color wash. So I'm just going to come in here and kind of just tap this in. As you can see, it's dark in color. Okay, I took my tape off. I'll clean up my edges in just a moment. So I'm just gonna take this. And some of you know this, some of you don't. I broke my shoulder in uh, November and I, and I had a total replacement done on my shoulder and I still can't use my right arm uh, the way I would like to. So you'll see me switch back and forth between my left hand and my right hand. I've become very used to using my left hand. Now I'm gonna use the face and I'm gonna take off. Put it on, take it off. So that you can leave the intensity of color where you want it and how you want it. And then, of course, depending on my mood and the time and all that other good stuff, I might actually badger it. But there we go. Now all I'm going to do is clean up my edges. I have a still a clean spot on my sponge. Well, maybe I should clean my sponge a little better. But I think you get the idea of how I use my sponge as a multi-tool, not just for one thing. And I sure don't use the face for any application. I always use the belly. And then if I'm working up against crown molding or whatever, I'm able to use the face of the sponge and clean up my area. Voila. It gets real. If you have any questions about what you just viewed, any concerns about applications, any tools that you might want to use, you can give us a call at any time at Faux by Kathy. Phone number is 630-653-2400. We're here to help you.